don't know how to do latte art. We take some cinnamon, basically cheese. There you have it. Good morning. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you along for the workday like I normally do. But this time, I'm actually going to be talking a little bit more in depth about what software engineers actually do, and specifically junior software engineers. If you're new here, my name is Marcella, and I am a software engineer based in Los Angeles, California. I've been a software engineer for a little over two years now, so I kind of have insight into um, how companies are structured, and specifically how software engineers fit into that structure and what their roles are. And so I figured I'd make this video because I get some comments sometimes that make me think that there's a lot of misconceptions about what software engineers do. There's a lot of YouTube videos, and I do take you along my day a lot of times, but I guess I'd never dive into the details of like what my responsibilities are, um, how like the team is structured, how I decide what I'm working on, uh, what other things that go into software engineering outside of coding. So I figured this would be kind of fun to make. For now, it's currently 9.30 and I usually start work at around 10. It kind of feels weird to say because when we were in office, I would go in at around 8 or 8.30 just because I wanted some time of like quiet before everyone came into the office a little later. But as I've been working from home, you know, it started off, I would start work at like 8, 8.30, and then it got pushed back to 9, and then 9.30, and now realistically I start work at 10. I'm gonna go ahead and do some journaling before I start work. It really helps me calm my mind. And then I'm gonna jump into work. Today is Friday, October... 15. So on Fridays, we actually don't have a team stand up in the morning. We do Monday through Thursday. We have a stand up each morning at 10.30 a.m. where we go around in a circle and each person states what they worked on yesterday, what they're working on today, and if they are blocked on any of the tickets that they currently have. And I'll go a little bit more into detail about tickets and how everything is structured a little bit later. But on Fridays, we do have a company-wide leadership or various teams from the company, just the present any cool updates or important updates that we need to know. And then later on today, we have some more interesting meetings that I will go into a little bit later because this intro has been long enough. But yeah, welcome to this video and I am gonna go journal now and then I'll check back in with you guys later. Bye now. I just finished journaling. It's currently um, around 9.55, so I'm gonna hop into work in about five minutes. The first thing that I do when I jump into work is I check Slack, see if there's any new announcements, any updates, any messages I may have missed, and then I'll take a look at my calendar, see what's coming up for the day, and kind of plan my day accordingly if there's any meetings. I also reserve some time in the morning to review any PRs that uh, my team may have sent out, and then I'll just jump into what my to-do list is for Day. I'm a very big to-do list person in my personal life and at work, so I make like a very small to-do list of things I want to get done for the day. It's 11.30, I'm about to hop into our company-wide meeting that I mentioned. Again, this meeting just has any sort of updates that leadership wants us to know about, or sometimes if they have no updates, um, the different teams will present something interesting and something new or something that recently launched and talk about how that 
um, has impacted different statistics within the company. When we were in office, these were super fun just because everyone gets in the same room. It was like packed to the brim, especially as the company was growing. And I can't imagine that now in COVID times, there was like barely any room on the floor to move around. Definitely a little bit of a safety hazard, but it was such an energetic environment. We talked about cool things and then everyone would go have lunch after and it was like the most fun things. It's less fun now that we're in COVID. Again, I'm just sitting here in front of a computer and they talk at me, but still, uh, I, it still kind of reminds me of those days and brings back those nostalgic memories. I'm gonna go into that now. Um, just now, I did actually do a peer review. There was only one PR for me to review. And there was a total of like 15 lines changed, so it was very small PR and I was able to quickly review it and it looked good to me, so. And then there was like a thing I was trying to release yesterday. We actually don't do any releases on Fridays, but this is a release to an internal tool, so it's not really that high impact, so I can choose to release it today if I want to. But I was trying to release it yesterday, but one of my checks fails, so therefore the release process Fails. trying to fix that step that failed. Um, it is a NPM audit issue though, so essentially NPM audit will flag any dependencies and have vulnerabilities. And this one is a very nested dependency and unfortunately the packages that I'm relying on rely on this dependency. And in order for me to fix this, I would need the packages that I'm relying on to fix it and then update their package so that I can pull a new package with the updated fix. And unfortunately they just don't have a fix out yet. So I just bypass the audit fix and because it is an internal tool, the risk is a lot lower. So we're able to release it. If it was uh, like production code that is user facing, we would be way more strict and we would not release that. And also this bug is a very small bug that doesn't have much potential to ruin anything. So that's why we bypassed it. Now some more insight. I'm gonna do this meeting now and then it will end at noon, so I'm gonna go for a walk. Our meeting just ended. I am locking my computer and about to go for a walk. Apparently it's 82 degrees out, even though it was so cold and chilly this past few days. I'm really sad that it says 82. So I'm gonna change out of this hoodie. Let's see if I can do a transition. Just some biker shirts, comfy tea. I'm feeling very low effort today. Toodaloo. It's currently 157. I actually have a few meetings back to back and let me just go through what they are. So the first meeting that I have at 2 p.m. is gonna be a team-wide demo meeting. And each person does a demo of what they've worked on this past week. And we do that every Friday. And then after that meeting, we have a 30 minute retro meeting. This ties back into like our work cycle, our sprints. This meeting occurs every two weeks. It's a, it's a time where we reflect on the previous two weeks. Three topics, anything that made you glad, anything that made you sad, and anything that you wish was blank. You fill out this form, you can enter any bullet points and we all discuss it as a team. You can bring up anything that you feel comfortable bringing up. It's a really good way to reflect on the work process and just, you know, if you, if you had a good week, a bad week, give people shout outs when you need to. And then the last thing is actually really fun. We are doing a team event today, which we actually haven't done a team event on this team since I joined. And I joined in April, so it's quite a long time. We all got sent these uh, pottery kits. I have it down there. We're essentially just gonna get on Microsoft Teams um, video chat and we're all gonna play with clay and make something out of it and just like enjoy some team bonding. It's supposed to happen quarterly. I think uh, each team gets a quarterly budget for team events. Anyway, I'm gonna hop onto the team demos now. Just finished our team demos 
and I am grabbing a LaCroix. I had my sister in town this past weekend, so when I went grocery shopping, I was able to get all the things I don't normally get because I can't carry it all myself. Like a case of LaCroix because she was able to carry it for me. That was very clutch. But anyway, we just finished our um, demos and we finished early, so we have about a 15 minute break until our retro meeting. During the meeting, just set up this new mechanical keyboard I got. Uh, Vistles was really kind enough to send it over. I'm still getting used to it. This is my Apple one that I love and I really like it because it's low effort and low profile so my fingers don't have to do a lot of work while I'm typing. This one is a little bit bigger. You can really see the difference here and that's not even on a stand. This one has the ability to pair to multiple devices at once which is really cool. I love the lights of course for the aesthetic. I'll leave a link to it below if you're interested and we'll see how I like it. We're about to hop into our team event. I need to set up somewhere I can be messy. This is the kit. Our two packs of clay, some tools in here, pottery tools, and then another paintbrush. And then it also came with this white paint. The only problem is I don't want to get anything in my apartment messy. So I think I'm actually gonna... Uh, this might be like the dumbest idea I've ever had, but we're in a time crunch. Everyone's about to get on um zoom to do this so i think i'm actually gonna use this glass tray from my tv stand and put it on top of my kitchen counter over there and work on the glass tray i'll be able to wash it after easily like in the sink and i'm thinking that might be the best idea i have so far because I don't want to get the kitchen counter dirty, I don't want to get my desk dirty, I don't want to get my table dirty, I don't want to get anything dirty and I feel like this glass I can clean easily. Uh, hopefully I'm not stupid but my team is probably almost ready so I should probably get going. In my world, don't worry darling, I'll just smile cause you're by my side. And now your eyes open up every morning to the love that shines in mine and i see it in yours too so now i sing to you and when you go and leave me here all alone these are the things I made. This is pretty ugly. I had a different vision for it, but I ran out of clay. This is like a little trinket dish that I made. Um, it's pretty cute. I like that. And then this, I'm going to use it for salt when I cook and put salt in it and then, you know, do a pinch of salt instead of having the bottle. It was so much fun though. This is my first team activity with a team and it was just nice to like talk to people on like a non-work basis, I guess. Like we were just chatting like and you know, different things. Of course, we talked about Squid Game. That's like all the hype right now. And yeah, it was just nice to catch up. I'm gonna clean and then I'll sit down and chat with you guys a little bit later. Reminiscing on the time when we first met I was tongue-tied, stupefied What was it that I said? Probably something foolish That didn't make much sense But you remember it a year later When I saw you next When I told you, told you That I need to hold you, hold you You said come right on over, over I could not wait to show you That was my actual day as a software engineer Obviously the team event is a once in a while thing But as an overview today I really didn't have a chance to sit down and code And I also didn't have anything to code because we're actually at the end of our current work cycle so I finished all my tickets and they're all in code reviews so a lot of things are either I'm working to deploy them or I am working towards uh, commenting back when people leave questions on my PRs so that was really all I did today I didn't do any coding per se I edited a few things and addressed some comments but not working on any new features and sometimes that's just the reality of it and then I had a bunch of meetings in the afternoon that kind of took up my time. As I was saying in the beginning there's lots more to being a software engineer than just coding although the coding is actually the fun part and my favorite part but there's lots of more boring stuff on top of it. One of the biggest things is you need to maintain the systems that you've built or that your team owns. This just means like making sure you're monitoring them, making sure you're working on any bugs that need to be fixed, 
refactoring anything that needs to be refactored because sometimes refactoring helps improve performance. Maintenance work is definitely not sexy, but it is super important. Maintaining your systems and having them be live and in production for a long time just shows that you're building um, software solutions that are going to be around for a while and are actually uh, useful. But not going to lie, I love being an intern. You basically just work on something for three months and then you're like, here it is. And then you just dip and you never have to work on maintaining it. So that was those were the days, but uh, we are past that now. Now you can't escape that stuff when you're full time. So maintenance is a big part and that just means like bug tickets and stuff like that. So you're not working on developing a new feature. You're working on making sure the things that you've built are going to be running properly. Another thing to note is that once you finish writing your code, like for a certain task, there's a whole process to getting it reviewed and then, you know, back and forth if people have different suggestions. And then after that's approved, you know, deploying it can also be a process. Some days I'll spend a whole day addressing comments, deploying, asking QA to QA it. A lot more process around just releasing it. And on top of um, different work that you have, you also have meetings. Now meetings can be uh, anything from your standard weekly meetings that you have with your team to do planning and to check-ins, etc., etc. And then there can be new meetings that get added onto your plate where you are asked for advice on building a certain feature or maybe coordinating with another team or maybe you need to hand off a project, you need to like always interact with people. I actually do enjoy meetings, but sometimes they take up a lot of time in your day and it's hard to get in the groove of work when there's meetings that break up your day. But that is a thing that does take up your time and you know, you have eight hours in a work day typically and having three meetings is three out of your eight hours and that's almost half of your day right there. So. Just something to think about. There's always those extra process things that come into play. A question that I get a lot is how do I decide what I'm going to be working on each day? I can break this down into two portions. First one being the process of which we work. The second portion being what we actually work on. For the process, most software engineering companies, including mine, use an agile method to structure their projects. It consists of short cycles of work. We use two weeks and the short cycles really allow for rapid development and constant revision. Projects are broken down into smaller tickets. So essentially think about when you are tackling a project, you write out a to-do list of all the things that need to be done. And when all of those things are done, the project is considered finished. Now take each entry in that list and make it a ticket. And uh, that's kind of how the tickets come about. Every two weeks, we have a meeting where we have a bunch of these tickets and we then assign them to a software engineer on the team. Throughout the two weeks, you have a set of tickets that you're expected to finish. And over the course of the two weeks, you work on finishing those tickets. This includes developing them, asking for review, releasing them, etc. And you do this all while managing any incoming requests and meetings on top of that. And then at the end of the two weeks, your team meets and you see how much of the work that you promised you'd get done got done and then you kind of reflect from there. And that's really the core of the Agile method and the way we work. So for me, deciding what I work on each day is as easy as just looking at the list of tickets that I need to get done in this two week period and picking picking something from there to start working on. Um, I usually just, there's different methods of prioritization. It's usually pretty clear which tickets are high priority and I usually start with the high priority tickets. And now when it comes down to what actual projects that the team works on, this can be a little bit more complicated. It comes from different sources. I'd say the most high priority tickets usually come from the quarterly initiatives that we have set for our team. So each quarter, our team, promises a set of initiatives to higher management, so our directors and vice presidents of the company. We tell them, these are the things we're gonna get done this quarter. About that quarter, we need to get that stuff done. So usually our projects come from those initiatives. It can come from other places and, you know, helping out different teams, et cetera, et cetera. But the majority of the work comes from those initiatives and what we promise to higher management because you kind of get judged a little bit on how well you deliver on those initiatives. So I'd say that's where the bulk of the work comes from. Another question I get a lot is what are my work hours or am I required to work certain hours? The short answer is kind of, like I have to attend the meetings that I'm a part of. So in that sense, there are some specific hours I need to be at work. Outside of that, my manager is pretty flexible and technically, I only need to work one hour 
in a day for it to be considered a work day. That's not to say that I only work one hour a day. I generally work from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. My manager really does not care at what hours we work or if we take breaks in between or anything. All that he cares about is that we get the work done that we promise that we're gonna get done. In general, uh, throughout the industry, work hours are pretty flexible. Most people implement some version of a nine to five or they figure out a different agreement with their manager. Last thing I'll mention is that you're like a professional at the same time. There's just some things that come along with like it being a career. This is true for all sorts of positions as well, not just software engineers, but you need to make sure you're growing professionally and that you're being conscious of your professional goals and working towards them. Usually in software engineering, this means you and your manager have a set of things that you are working to improve so that you can get promoted to the next level. So in addition to doing your work, managing your sprints, managing your meetings, managing everything else you need to manage. You also need to be aware of um, things your manager wants you to improve and have those conversations with them and make sure you're incorporating that in your day to day. And I would say this is a good stopping point. This is a good general overview of like the day to day and the structure of a software engineer within a tech company. Um, let me know if you have any other questions. I know that there's a lot more things to talk about here, but I don't want to make this video too long. So feel free to leave any questions below and I may address them either in the comments or in another video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful and I will see you in another video. Bye!